Great rivalries in professional sports are the foundation of what fandom is built on. Whether it's the hatred or just the competitive nature that a rival brings out in their adversary, the tension always seems to draw people in. Still, the fact remains that some of the most high-profile feuds don't always produce mixed results. In truth, there have been several great fighters who developed rivalries with someone they just couldn't seem to beat. Now, without further ado and ranked in no particular order, number 8. Colby Covington with Kenrugu Usman Colby Chaos Covington is a brash trash talker who goes out of his way to generate controversy. While he may be one of the sport's most polarizing figures, there's no denying that the talented welterweight is also one of the division's best. The former NCAA Division I wrestler has defeated several top welterweights. Of course, one man he hasn't beaten is the reigning champion Kamaru Usman. Connington and Usman met for the first time at UFC 245. Tension was high and the meeting lived up to the hype. While Chaos was arguably winning the bout, Usman would end up putting him away in the fifth round via TKO. Despite the initial setback, Covington continued his verbal assaults heading into their rematch this past November. Still, when the cage closed, the rematch was slightly less competitive, but still produced the same victor as the champion picked up a unanimous decision win. Colby Covington is a well-rounded fighter who has all the tools to become a world champion. Unfortunately, he happens to be fighting in the same era with an all-time great like Usman. Number 7. Daniel Cormier vs. John Jones Between their infamous press conference brawl and the many harsh words exchanged over the years, you'll be hard-pressed to find a pair of rivals who despise each other more than John Jones and Daniel Cormier. After a great deal of build-up, an undefeated Cormier challenged John Jones for the first time at USC 182. Despite a valiant effort on the part of DC, Jones was the clear victor via unanimous decision. In the years that followed, Jones dealt with several issues outside of the cage, including legal troubles and failed drug tests. During that time, Cormier filled the light heavyweight void and became the division's champion in his absence. When the two met for a second time at UFC 214, it was Cormier who entered as the champion. With his ninjas looking to regain the belt, he was forced to vacate. While the champion got off to an excellent start, Jones landed a head kick in the third round that set the stage for a TKO victory. Unsurprisingly, given his history, Jones failed a post-fight drug test, and the result was later changed to no contest. Still, the now-retired Cormier's resume lacks a victory over his most hated foe, despite a legendary career. Number 6. Ben Henderson v. Anthony Pettis Though he's sometimes overlooked in such conversations, Ben Smooth Henderson is one of the greatest lightweights in UFC history. The former title holder holds signature wins over several legends in their prime, including Frankie Edgar, Nate Diaz, Donald Cerrone, and Georgie Masvidal. Yet, despite his many accomplishments, Henderson is arguably best known for being on the receiving end of the signature Showtime kick. The fight that featured the famed kick took place at WEC 53 in 2010, where Henderson was acting as the defending champion. Though the move itself didn't end the contest, the judges ultimately scored the fight in favor of Pettis, who became the new DDC champion. When both men made their way into the UFC, fans hoped that they would eventually see a second meeting. Roughly two and a half years after their first encounter, Pettis' Henderson 2 took place at UFC 164. Once again, Ben Henderson entered the cage as the champion, only this time he was holding the UFC belt. Sadly, Henderson would once again have his title taken away by Anthony Pettis, who scored an early submission win to capture the UFC crown. Though he has several notable wins, Anthony Pettis is one of the few great lightweights that Henderson just couldn't overcome. Number 5. Chad Mendes is Joe Zaldo Team Alpha Male's Chad Money Mendez might be the best featherweight to never hold UFC gold. With an NCAA Division I wrestling pedigree, the three-time title challenger has signature wins over Cub Swanson, Clay Guida, and Ricardo Lamas. Still, the biggest reason Mendez never reached the sports pinnacle was because of his arch-rival, Joe Aldo. After compiling a perfect 11-0 record, Mendez earned his first shot at the featherweight champion at UFC 142, a bout that saw the Brazilian pick up a first-round KO victory. Of course, following the loss, Mendez would pick up five consecutive wins to earn a rematch with Aldo at UFC 179. Their second meeting was highly competitive and was even awarded Fight of the Year honors. However, the judges ultimately scored the fight in favor of Aldo. While he could never beat the longtime featherweight title holder, their second encounter was one of his finest performances. Number 4. Joseph Benavides vs. Demetrius Johnson Recently retired flyweight Joseph Benavides spent most of his USC career in the title picture. In fact, Benavides came ever so close to becoming the promotion's first flyweight champion in 2012. Of course, his initial title bid was thwarted by his nemesis Demetrius Johnson, 
who picked up a narrow split decision win at USC 152. Following the loss, Benavides would rattle off three straight victories and wind up face-to-face -face with Mighty Mouse once again. Their rematch would go down at USC on Fox 9. Unfortunately, it was an even worse showing for Benavides, who got finished by Mighty Mouse in the very first round. It's quite possible that Benavides was the second-best flyweight in the world for much of his USC career, but the division clearly belonged to Johnson during the majority of that span. Number 3. Tito Ortiz was Chuck Liddell Sure, we all know Tito Ortiz finally got one over on his longtime rival Chuck Liddell in 2018. Still, that contest featured a 48-year-old shell of Liddell. However, in their respective primes, the feud was one-way traffic driven by the Iceman. Their first encounter occurred in 2004 at UFC 47, with a contest that saw Liddell knock out Tito Ortiz early in the second round. A little less than two years later, after winning five fights in a row, Ortiz would once again meet the Iceman at USC 66, where Little was acting as the light heavyweight champion. Unfortunately for Ortiz, he would suffer another KO loss, but was at least able to make it to the third round. Despite their final fight, Ortiz couldn't compete with the Iceman in his prime when the two were in the UFC. Number 2. Misha Tate's Ronda Rousey Ronda Rousey's Misha Tate was the UFC's first major female rivalry. While the feud helped establish women's MMA in the promotion, Tate never managed to pick up a win against her hated adversary. The two first crossed paths in March of 2013 under the Strikeforce banner. That evening, Rousey would step into the ring as the challenger for the Strikeforce title. Of course, it would take the former Olympian just 4 minutes and 27 seconds to secure her signature armbar and end her foe's reign. Following their merge into the UFC, the two appeared as coaches on the Ultimate Fighter reality series before their second encounter, where the animosity continued to build leading into their rematch at UFC 168. This time around, Tay had a much better showing and became the first fighter to make it out of round one with Rousey. However, she once again fell victim to the armbar, this time in the third round. While Tate's performance earned the respect of many fans, she didn't earn the respect of Ronda Rousey, who refused to shake her hand after the contest. Number 1. Anthony Johnson's Daniel Cormier Anthony Rumble Johnson is one of the hardest hitters the USC light heavyweight division has ever seen. In fact, the Georgia native holds a 13-second KO when over reigning champion Glover Still, one man Rumble never managed to defeat was former Olympic wrestler Daniel Cormier. After essentially finishing all other contenders, Johnson received two shots at Cormier in the light heavyweight title at UFC 187 and 210, respectively. Unfortunately, Johnson would lose both bouts in the exact same way, via rear naked choke. With John Jones sidelined, Anthony Johnson had a chance to claim the division's top spot, but could never quite get past Daniel Cormier. Despite his setbacks to DC, Johnson has beaten everyone else he's faced in the division. 